Hi everyone. It's really good to connect once again and take our journey forward where we are learning some concept related to money laundering, anti-money laundering and how we can excel in this profession. Today the topic which we will be discussing is related to due diligence. Whether you talk about exams like CAMS or GCI's AMLS program or any other anti-money laundering certification. This is a concept which is very very important for us to understand how do we go for a due diligence of the customer. But before we talk about the concept of due diligence, it's very very important for us to understand how do we categorize the customer into various category low, medium and high. So in today's topic which is going to be a brief video I am going to discuss the three risks related to customers in a banking or a financial institutes how do we categorize the customer as a low risk medium risk and high risk and then once we will understand this risk categories we will further discuss how do we go about different kind of due diligence so there are three type of risk majorly we classify them as customer type risk product risk and geographical risk so when i say customer type risk a risk which is inherent in the nature of work what customer does for example customer belongs to certain category of businesses or profession which are considered riskier than the others. What are those businesses? Any business which is cash rich business is considered high risk for money laundering purpose. Each time customer has a petrol pump, salon, bar, pub or similar businesses. These are the businesses which are very cash intensive. The way customer deal in those businesses also carries a lot of cash. Then each time we talk about cash businesses, the risk of money laundering really goes up. So first risk, customer type risk could be one where customer belong to these category of businesses. It also include other line of businesses such as jewelry business, business of art and antique and so on. Because in art and antique, you just cannot determine the real worth of the good. If it's a painting, it could be worth $10, $100, $100 million. So deciding the real worth of that commodity product, it's very, very difficult. That is why art and antique is considered a riskier business. Apart from that, the customer type risk also include the risk of politically exposed person in short we call it pap we will have a very detailed video on pap because it's very very important for us to understand what is real meaning of pap pap is not just a person who is into who is politician or is directly associated with any any political group it also includes lot of other people around that person. So for now, just understand the PAP is considered a high risk customer. So this is the risk which is related to the type of customer. A customer which has a business or profession which is riskier. The second category of risk is called geographical risk. Each time customer belongs to any geography which is considered riskier, whether blacklisted countries, grey listed countries or those countries who have a reputation to support terrorism, money laundering or corruption. That risk is called geographical risk. Even if your customer stays in a country which is safer, However, has a line of business or any connects with those geographic uh, high risk countries, the customer is still exposed to geographical risk. Each time 
a business has any customer or vendor in those countries where the transactions are happening between two parties we have that risk called geographical risk and the third type of risk is called product risk bank offers a lot of products which includes the safety deposit box which includes internet banking which includes personal banking and so on though all these products are designed for the ease of customer but each time customer uses this product bank gets exposed to the high risk for example internet banking or net banking how would bank know who is actually using this let's say on paper mr a is the customer how will bank determine if a is using this net banking or somebody else is using on behalf of mr a so that is where we get exposed to that risk which is called the product risk so internet banking is considered riskier because one customer can use that internet banking from any geography second we really don't know who is actually using that internet banking so riskier product the second safety deposit box bank give that safety deposit box or locker so that customer can put their belongings there their precious jewelry or similar stuff can put in there but most of the time money launderers misuse it they put cash in there and they misuse the safety deposit box as well there are certain products which bank offer however those product always carry higher risk so these are three important and broad classification of risk product risk geographical risk and customer type risk once you get familiar with this risk in the next session we will be discussing how do we determine what kind of due diligence should be done for this customer whether we should go for cdd sdd or edd so in my next session or next video i'll be coming up with that concept of due diligence from examination perspective i would rate this particular point as very important not just for an examination purpose but if you are working in a financial institutes or you are into a front facing profile of a bank i would still say that the concept of due diligence will be really really helpful for you so whether you are preparing for any exam or you are just enhancing your skill set either ways this knowledge will go be a long way with this thank you so very much for having me once again and before you sign off please like and subscribe and last but not the least if you really want me to cover any specific topic please do not hesitate to put that in comment box i have got a lot of requests from student where they want me to cover certain topic i'm really really happy to support in any way i can so with this me kavanjit ko sign off thank you very much for having me have a good day thank you so much